Hi guys, Natalie here, and before I start and get into my video, I wanted to introduce you to the newest member of my family. This is Maggie. She's our new pug, and she's just a puppy, so she's kind of all over the place right now, which is absolutely correct. Yes, that's right. So yeah, this is Maggie. Hi everyone. Hi guys, so uh, yeah, that was Maggie. Sorry, I had to introduce her there. Um, I'm going to try and keep this video as quick as I can. Also, I'd like to say sorry for just not posting videos for the last bit. Um, I have about four or five more to go before the series of 2012 is finished. And wouldn't it be great if I could get them out before 2012 is over? Um, I've just been really busy. All the usual excuses, to be honest. I should have done them and I didn't, but here they come. Um, this video is going to be called Hotels, Food, Drink and Travel. Um, it's all the basic essentials that you need to know, or at least that I went through in getting to Gen Con this year and things that I ate and drank. Um, oh my gosh, the food is amazing. I love American food. It, oh, oh my gosh, I just, I ate everything that I could find and get my hands on. It was awesome. Um, let me see. Um, we were lucky enough to have somebody available to us for the, when the, the first day we got there that had a car. So we actually went out to Walmart and got some supplies. Luckily enough, our hotel had a fridge in the room or a refrigerator. Um, so we're we're able to store things in the fridge, which is which is a really great way to save money at Gen Con. So if that's an option for you, I definitely go for it. Um, there is numerous and numerous amounts of great restaurants around. Um, there are also food trucks. The food trucks um at Gen Con are oh my gosh, the range of really nice looking food they had was awesome, and they were at least this year they're based at. They were based at Union Station or, you know, just in front of the Hotel Union Station outside of the ICC. Um, there's various different places to eat. The Ram, Scotty's, Tilted Kilt, the Circle Centre Mall. There's a store, a CVS around the corner. Um, there's a Taco Bell, a Hooters, um, a Dairy Queen, all that. Um, the let me see most of those places like the Ram Scotty still to kill the Clada are all great places to have a drink as well. And um, the Clada, from what I gather, is an Irish bar, but yeah, it's meant to be an Irish bar. Um, the Tilted Kilt is basically like Hooters with more skin showing. I I had a good time, and the must see places, the must. <laughs> the place I would highly recommend going would be the Ram and Scotty's. Um, they go all out in terms of decoration and the menus that they plan specifically for Gen Con. They have gaming and nerd related menus available. Um, and not only that, they have amazing burgers and fries and stuff like that. Um, they also had some really nice drinks, I think. It was Scotty's that I had a really interesting drink, drinks menu with various different cocktails and everything. Um, 100%, if you're going to Gen Con, go to the, the Ram and go to Scotty's. Don't miss those two places. Um, let me see. Travel, I don't want to go into. I came from Ireland and I did way too much traveling. For me, I mean, I took probably about 15 different modes of transport and way too many different ways and routes and to get to Gen Con this 2012. Next year I'm going to take the most direct route I possibly can and eliminate as much of the changing over of travel and minimizing the travel time as well. It just really took it out of me. Um, and there was so much to plan. When you're not in the States, trying to plan travel within the States is the most confusing thing. For me, I'm just going to go as direct as I possibly can. That's my mission. Um, one thing that people in general might find helpful, I flew into the main Indiana, Indianapolis International Airport, and um, there is a shuttle type that can take you from the airport to the ICC and from the ICC back to the airport. Um, <clears throat> it's called the Green Line. 
it picks you up right at the front of the ICC. There's a little bus stop there. And uh, it actually goes around to, from what I can see, all the kind of hotels in the um, downtown Indianapolis area. So I would definitely recommend checking with your hotel to see if that green line goes right past your hotel. Um, the cost of the shuttle to the airport for me was $7, so I assume it's the same going the other way around. Um, travel time kind of varied for for me. Um, they said it would be about 20 minutes. It probably was more like 40. So make sure you can estimate more than you need to into your travel time to get to the airport. Um, I guess it's somewhere between 20 to 40 minutes to get there. Um, the last thing in this video that I really wanted to go over was the hotel. Um, I stayed at the Westin and usually what happens is that you register to go to Gen Con and you get your housing access code and you use that then to really, really, really quickly try and book the hotel you want. Um, I have no idea how that works. I'm going to try and do it this year. I was late getting my badge this year, so I actually ended up getting a room from somebody that didn't need theirs. Um, that being said, if you get a room you don't want, if you need somebody to share a room with, if you're still looking for a room after um, housing has been fully booked up, um, you should head over to the Gen Con community forums. There's always a whole thread for people trying to dump rooms, find roommates, um, find rooms, all that sort of thing. So I definitely recommend that site. That's where I got my room from last year. Um, I stayed in the Westin. Me and my friends stayed in the Westin. We got a room with two double beds for the two of us. And we stayed there from Monday through to Sunday. Or maybe it was Tuesday through to Sunday. Whichever way, um, <laughs> it has been a long while ago now, so I can't even remember um, most of this. But from what I remember, our room was $183 a night. And I don't know, you guys can work the rest out from that. Plus there was something like $100 in incidentals that we had to pay up front and we would get back. Um, at the end if we didn't use any. Um, we thought when we arrived at the hotel that we would need to pay for it when we were leaving. So coming from Ireland um, and having already used our credit cards in New York and various other places we've been, our plan was to take out a little bit of money from the ATMs every day and then we'd be able to pay the full amount at the end. When we arrived at the Westin, they asked us for the full amount for the hotel room plus all the incidentals right up front. Otherwise, we were not able to get a room. And I tell you now, they basically said, if we don't, if we don't get that money, we're putting your room in, back into the general pool. We were shocked because our credit cards, we didn't have really enough money left on them, you know, before you reach the limit to pay off the rooms. Also, with the time difference, in we couldn't use the ATM anymore. Basically, even though it was a new day in the States, it wasn't yet a new day back here in Ireland. So we'd already used the ATMs for that day. Um, <laughs> so it was a real nightmare um, to get all the money together. We really had to just, I think we had to use so many different cards Um laser cards, we had to use our credit cards, both of us had to use our credit cards, we had to borrow some money off people. Um, eventually the Western let us off paying the incidentals up front and just let us pay the actual hotel room and we just about managed to get that together. Obviously then the next day we could use the ATMs again so we had cash again for the next day. It was just a total nightmare to get to like, to get into our hotel room. So if you are staying in any of the hotels make sure you have the money available for the room up front I mean I'm not sure if they're going to ask you to pay for it up front just make sure you have it available because they as said they might just put your room back into the general pool and I mean all the rooms are gone you know so you might not have anywhere to stay if they do that Um. that being said other than that like minor issue um, I love the Westin. It was it's such a new, really clean hotel. The rooms were massive. The beds were massive. Loads of pillows. We had a fridge in our room. 
um, big windows, big bathroom, shower, um, iron ironing board. I'm not sure what you guys call it. Um, and best of all, there was a skywalk, which means that we are direct. We were directly um, connected to the ICC by like a bridge thing. Um, so to get from our hotel room to the ICC was like five minutes, and we were like, it was just awesome. It was so handy, so close, and actually. I would consider staying there again next week, next year, um, just because of the convenience thing and the cleanliness. Um, probably I would recommend to cut down costs. You know, it would have been nice maybe to stay, share a double bed, and then have another two people in the room, and that would have you know split the cost by four rather than two, and we would have saved more money that way. Um, other hotels that are very close and. I'm not sure if they're connected or not, are the Hyatt. Um, some of the Marriott's, because there's a ton of the Marriott hotels. I'm not sure which one's connected, which one isn't. There's one right next to the West, and that's connected. Um, there's the, the Crown Plaza as well, which also looks like a really nice hotel, and it's really, really super close. Um, so next year, when you get your badge... Get your housing access code and as soon as possible, as soon as possible, sign up for, try and figure out what hotel you want and sign up for it straight away, like immediately, because I think they go, they, they sell out within a few days, if not a day or a few hours. So once you get your housing access code, go get your hotel room as soon as possible. Um, that's it for this video. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything else in this kind of general topic to mention, so, and um, that's it. See you soon.